If you decided to uh, one day go on YouTube looking for old Howard Stern clips, you'd have a lot of edgy, politically incorrect content to choose from. Stern's many segments with an intellectually disabled dwarf comedian named Beetlejuice, for example, are not very hard to find. There's also a bunch of compilations of people fighting on Stern's set in the style of Jerry Springer, usually over money or adultery or whatever. Uh, There's enough degeneracy there to last you weeks if for some reason you were inclined to go and seek it and watch it. But there's some recurring Howard Stern content that's not so easy to find because, by and large, it's been scrubbed from most major video sharing sites. The segments I'm talking about involve Stern speaking about his sexual attraction to children, specifically Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen. Again and again, for several several years, Stern described the Olsen twins as sexually attractive. Quote, they're so amazingly hot, Stern says in one of his segments, referring to the underage girls. And in several cases, Stern brings up the girls unprompted, leading to um, awkward moments with his co-hosts. Because it's not possible to truly eliminate any content from the internet, you can still find this footage if you know where to look. A small handful of anonymous accounts have defied corporate censors and uploaded some of Stern's many disturbing comments about children that he finds sexually attractive. So here's just one example where Stern laments that the girls, in his estimation, aren't as attractive uh, now uh, as they were when they were 13 years old. Listen. To speak of them individually is when they turn 18, who you want to bang first. Yeah, it was weird. I was reading this magazine. Yeah, Mary Kate or Ashley. Exactly. Well, actually, Beth was reading a magazine. She goes, hey, did you see this? And she, I forget what magazine it is, but it's the Olsen twins hugging each other in a photo shoot, and they go, this is Howard Stern's fantasy. You're kidding. What yeah. magazine did this? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was some magazine. and You know what, though? I don't really want to have sex with them anymore. Me neither. I, 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 no, what no. I, mean, I, I, can't, I don't know. They got kind of dwarfy looking. Which one of them looks like a monkey? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like something went wrong. Like they, they stopped growing or something. They're not as hot as you thought they were going to be. No yeah. Way. No way. It really looked for a while, like when they were 13 or 14, they were going to be supermodels. But then they got... They, they stuck right there. They kind of, yeah, they kind of like didn't grow or something. It's weird, and I was counting down to their 18th birthday so we could have sex with them, but. Not everybody lives <laughs> up to that. Like, like uh, what's her face did uh, Alyssa Milano? She lived up there. Yeah. Her. She got hot. Someone told me she's really hairy, though. Who, Alyssa? Got, like, got a belly hair. and Really? Yeah. Uh, like, 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 you know, Who big... told you that? I don't know. She's a guinea. <laughs> yeah. How dare you? <laughs> But the Olsen twins get that Hobbit-looking thing going, you know? Right. They, like they, they, they live in Middle Earth. <laughs> yeah, their, their money makes them look. Yeah. Okay, so you see there, not only did he always talk about wanting to have sex with underage girls, but, but uh, as he says there, it was in a magazine, presumably some sort of, uh, some sort of a tabloid magazine. It was, a, it was like a running joke in the entire media. Everyone in the media knew, oh, you know, that, uh, that old man, Howard Stern, wants to have sex with these underage girls. Isn't that so funny? Everybody knew it and just accepted it as some uh, charming quirk of Howard Stern's. And there are many more clips like that that we could play. Some are even more disturbing than the one you just heard. This is a grown man in his 40s at the time repeatedly sexualizing children who are barely teenagers. Now, many people have had their lives destroyed, have been reduced to groveling apologies for saying things that that are not even a tenth as bad as what Stern says there. And that wasn't even a tenth as bad as other things that Stern would frequently say. These clips were, though, nauseating and creepy when he made them, and they're nauseating and creepy now. There was never a point in American history where it was acceptable to sexualize children like this, but for years, Howard Stern continued doing just that right out in the open. Nobody stopped him. He didn't seem ashamed of it at all. He tracked the Olsen twins from puberty to adulthood, commenting on their sex appeal as he perceived it, at every turn. But somewhere along the line, Howard Stern and his team decided that he had to stop talking about the Olsen twins. And and, and more than that, someone decided that all of Stern's past comments about the Olsen twins needed to be purged from the internet. All the other degenerate segments, or most of them, could stay online, but the stuff where he lusts after young children, well, well, that had to go. And it was different from all the other smut. It was too damning. And so they went in and they tried to get rid of it. And with that evidence mostly expunged from the internet, Stern has embraced pretty much every agenda item of the Fortune 500. He's now officially a woke hall monitor by his own admission. In fact, this week, Stern proudly identified as woke. Listen. If woke means 
I can't get behind Trump, which is what I think it means, or that I support people who want to be transgender or I'm for the vaccine. Dude, call me woke as you fucking want. Now, as part of this new woke persona, Stern attacked Lauren Boebert for her inappropriate behavior in that theater a few days ago. Uh, this is the guy who spent the first three decades of his career being a creepy, degenerate sex fiend. And now he's playing the prude. Now he's pretending to be scandalized uh, by the sort of behavior that, that he, he would openly have on his show all the time. He's become a pathetic, old, washed-up schoolmarm. But he's now shielded by his new woke identity. He's immune from accusations of hypocrisy, just like he's immune from accusations of being a dirty old man attracted to children. It's a revealing transformation, if only because it shows how little daylight there is between woke hall monitors and depraved pedophilic scumbags. Depraved pedophilic scumbags and woke hall monitors, they're not two destinations on opposite ends of the spectrum. Like he went from one to the other, at no point did he kind of make a pit stop and, uh, and, and try out being a decent, normal person. He never tried that out. But that's because it's not a long journey to get from one to the other. They're in the same neighborhood, and there's a lot of overlap. And they know it. Howard Stern knows it, which is why he's sensitive about all those clips of him salivating over 13-year-old girls. There are other old clips that are inconvenient for Stern, too, of course, clips that are um, especially relevant after what just happened to Alex Jones. Jones, as you recall was just ordered to pay something like a billion dollars, a billion dollars to the families of the victims of the Sandy Hook mass shooting. And it bankrupted him. Now, of course, Jones was wrong in what he said about Sandy Hook. He admits that. But as far as we know, Howard Stern has never apologized for his decision to mock the victims of the Columbine school shooting. In fact, Stern did not just mock these victims. He said that uh, their killers should have raped them first before executing them. He actually said this on his show. Listen. How's it going? All right. This is Howard? Yeah. Oh, man. I lived like a mile and a half in the school, man. I had a couple friends that were there, and I talked to them yesterday. What did they say? They said that it was just a bunch of chaos, shooting, and... Boy, a bunch of good-looking girls go to that school. That guy was right. The guy who called in, he was a little too excited, but... You know, it, was like, it was like really good looking girls running out of there with their hands over their heads. Yeah, I think the bomb teams are still working. Did those kids try to have sex with any of the good looking girls? They didn't even do that. <laughs> At least if you're going to go kill yourself and kill all the kids, like, why wouldn't you have some sex? Yeah, I would think that I, I would want some sex. Probably. Yeah, I mean, if I was going to kill some people, I'd take them out with some sex. I guess they were getting a rush from what they were doing. <laughs> they said when, like, they, these guys were really against the good looking girls because the good looking girls wouldn't pay attention to them. I think the good-looking girls will be begging them to live, and they go, you don't have to beg because you're going to be dead in a minute. Yeah, don't cry. Oh, you're don't cry. Yes. So that's pretty much the most vile thing a human being could possibly say. I mean, that's, that's like the worst. Now, I personally give people a lot of leeway for jokes, quote-unquote, made years ago in a different time when people weren't as sensitive and edgy humor wasn't as edgy back then. It was, it was a different world. It was a different culture. But... This is way beyond the bounds of what would have been considered remotely acceptable even in the 90s. This is, again, perhaps the worst thing I've ever heard anyone say ever. It's the kind of thing that, that it, it, how could that even come to your mind? How are you even thinking about that? He's not only joking about a school shooting right after it happened. This was a day later. You have to understand something about Columbine when it happened. I mean, this was, uh, of course, any school shooting is a terrible tragedy, a very sad um, but at the time, you know, this was for Columbine, for those who lived through it, it was, it was, it was like similar to 9-11 before 9-11 happened. Just the effect it had on the, on the country, uh, just the, the kind of shell shock that most people were experiencing the next day and for, and for weeks after. And here he is a day later telling, quote unquote, jokes about how the kids who were just killed should have been raped lusting after the survivors of the school shooting and saying the shooter should have raped their victims. Think about how much you use your phone. The scary part is that your phone carrier collects data on whatever it is you're doing. They say, it's, they say that it's so that they can better understand your interests, but really all they want is to sell your activity to advertisers. Stuff like the sites you visited and what you've been up to online. The more 
they can get on you, the larger their paycheck becomes, which is why I use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is an app that prevents your phone carrier from being able to see the sites you visit and sell it to third parties, uh, to third parties. And all it takes is one tap of a button. All of your network data gets encrypted and rerouted through ExpressVPN's secure servers for ultimate privacy. Easy, effective, no reason not to do it. Not only does it shield your web browsing, ExpressVPN protects all of your network data so you can stay private even when you're using your favorite apps. Whether you're an uh, iPhone, Android, or even a tablet user, ExpressVPN works on all of your devices. The best part is one subscription can be used on up to five devices at the same time. When your phone carrier tracks you, that's a, a gross invasion of privacy. You can either keep letting them cash in on you, or you can visit expressvpn.com slash Walsh. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash Walsh to get protected. Expressvpn.com slash Walsh. Keep in mind <clears throat> that he said all this He said all this when he was a grown man in his mid-40s. But Howard Stern has never been banned from any social media platform for those comments. He wasn't ordered to pay a billion dollars to the, to the, uh, how do you think the the victim, the, the, the families, the parents of those children must have felt hearing that? Did he ever have to pay them a billion dollars in restitution? He didn't pay them a dime. That's because, fortunately for Stern, he mocked the Columbine victims prior to this new era of wokeness where free speech is illegal as long as it's sufficiently, uh, uh, you know, offensive. And now, just to cover his bases, Stern has completed his transition into the cult of wokeness soon enough to protect himself against cancellation. Now they're not going to come after him because he's on their team, which is part of the strategy for Howard Stern. Of course, this was not a, a coincidence that he decided to to make this transition into being fully woke, pro-trans, pro-vaccine, everything. Complaining about Donald Trump, I guess, every show. I don't listen to a show at all, but that's what it seems like. Now, meanwhile, Russell Brand is uh, being demonetized based on accusations alone. Unlike Howard Stern, Russell Brand never publicly expressed his sexual attraction to 13-year-old girls. Uh, He never said that school shooting victims should have been raped. Um, But he has expressed skepticism about Big Pharma and the war in Ukraine. And for that reason, this week, a culture committee in the UK parliament sent Rumble a letter requesting that they demonetize Russell Brand. Quoting from the letter, quote, I'm writing concerning the serious allegations regarding Russell Brand. We would like to know whether Rumble intends to join YouTube in suspending Mr. Brand's ability to earn money on the platform. In the most passive-aggressive fashion imaginable, The UK Parliament also sent a similar letter to TikTok, quote, We would be grateful if you could confirm whether Mr. Brand is able to monetize his TikTok posts, including his videos relating to the serious accusations against him, and what the platform is doing to ensure the creators are not able to use the platform to undermine the welfare of victims of inappropriate and potentially illegal behavior. Now, let's take stock of what we're seeing here. This is the government of the UK effectively telling multiple social media platforms to demonetize one of the most influential commentators on the planet solely on the basis of unproven allegations. This is the government moving to have financial penalties imposed on someone um, without any criminal conviction at all. Not just no criminal conviction, no criminal charge has even been levied at this point. There's no plausible deniability here. They're being pretty much as explicit as they can possibly be about it. Before the Twitter files came out, this would have been dismissed as a wild conspiracy theory. You weren't allowed to think that governments were colluding with big tech to censor unapproved voices. But now the government is just coming out and admitting that's exactly what they're doing. This isn't just happening in the UK. The Biden administration does it too. Well, unlike its competitor, YouTube, Rumble emphatically rejected the request from the UK government to their credit. But YouTube is the far bigger platform. And their decision to instantaneously demonetize Russell Brand sets a very worrying precedent, and also a totally incoherent and inconsistent one. As Elijah Schaefer has pointed out, Cardi B is currently fully monetized on YouTube, and that in spite of the fact that she, if you want to talk about what things people have done in their past, she openly admits to drugging and robbing men in her past. It's on tape. She admits it. Watch. Cardi B is responding to a whole lot of backlash she is getting for an admission that she made on an Instagram Live video three years ago. Now, someone brought it back up. The internet likes to do that sort of thing. And Cardi was talking about her days when she was working as a stripper, and she admitted that she would take guys back to hotel rooms, drug them, and rob them. Here's what she said.
I mean, you can't understand what the hell she's saying, but uh, just to translate for you, yes, she she openly admits and brags about the fact that uh, when she was a stripper, she would, uh, you know, cozy up to guys and she would uh, get them back to uh, the apartment and then she would uh, drug them and then she would rob them. Violent felonies that she's bragging about. Her history as a confessed date rapist has not precluded her from major corporate sponsorships or monetization on YouTube. You know, we call this a double standard, but double standard isn't really the right term for this. It's really one standard. And the standard is if you're useful to the left, if you're on their team, you can essentially do whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. That is the standard consistently applied. And nobody can really deny that anymore. This is not an arbitrary application of shifting sets of standards. This, again, is one standard. Leftists are immune. That's the rule. That's the standard. Now, with that in mind, we might ask, what's the appropriate response? Because pointing out hypocrisy is not going to do anything. It's not accomplishing much. We've learned that much over the past few years. What's needed is some courage. We need more of what Rumble is doing. Rumble knows that Russell Brand might actually be guilty of what he's accused of doing. After all, he was an admitted sex-addicted degenerate back when these crimes supposedly occurred. It certainly is not outside the realm of possibility that he did treat the women the way that he's accused of treating them. But the leadership of Rumble understands that it makes no sense to unperson Russell Brand based on mere allegations when we know for a fact that Brand's critics are entirely motivated by politics. They want to mete out punishments only to the enemies of the regime, while its allies and lackeys are given exemptions. Kowtowing to these people is not a smart or sustainable strategy. We just can't do it. In fact, all we can really do now is just ignore everything that the system says and assume for all intents and purposes that everyone they demonize is innocent. Now, if we're being honest... That's not always going to be true. Sometimes we'll be wrong and we'll end up defending people who are guilty. Sometimes the system will say, yeah, every once in a while, the system will say something true. Every once in a while, maybe the system villainizes someone who actually is a villain. But the problem is that they lie so often about so many things. And they're so blatantly driven by ideology and by narrative. And are so wildly dishonest. And their motives are so evil that we have, we have to ignore them completely at this point. By, by defending and promoting the most odious scumbags among us, by embracing ghouls like Howard Stern and Cardi B, they've really left us no choice. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.